Wow. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> that certainly was a game. Um, so Bears lose to the Indianapolis Colts by a score of like, I don't know, 21 to, 21 to 12, 21 to 16, something like that. Um, they didn't win. I know that Bears lost. And uh, yeah, weird game really weird game but no reason we should have lost that at all absolutely none um these coaches are really really making the case for why they should be fired and it's week three like and I back in January I was critical of the decision to keep Falouse I knew that bringing in a rookie you need to bring in a fresh voice all that Foose had problems that he was and mistakes he was still making that I was like, it was spooking me. But they decided to keep him because the defense is good. And of course, this is this is this is what you get. This is what you get. You get games like this that we should win, that there's no reason we should have lost. Just like last year, we had a ton of games that there was no reason we should have lost. And here we are. Uh we're one and two on the year. Um and man, like it, it, it's just disappointing because this is supposed to be the get right game. This is supposed to be the game where I think I predicted that we would have like 20, 27 to 13 or something would be the final score that we would win. And we didn't. We lost. And it was in brutal fashion. Uh, despite Caleb Williams having the best day in terms of passing yards that a Bears quarterback has had since 2016 and the best ever passing yardage for a rookie Bears quarterback ever like nobody's ever passed for more passing yards he had 363 yards through the air today could have easily had more too he could have hit 400 if he just got things going more in the first half like really solid day for Caleb and people are being harsh on him and I understand it he made some pretty baffling mistakes that first interception he threw cannot happen like late late read through it just I mean he was being pressured I will say that that's the common denominator here with all of Caleb's issues is he keeps getting pressured but we'll get to that throws it towards the sideline and one of the linebackers just comes up thank you very much and geez like can't can't happen shouldn't happen will happen because he's a rookie but needs to never happen again Second interception wasn't, I'm not putting solely on him. It was a throw to Rome, which was on the money. Hit Rome right in the hands, but the DB reached up, hit it through, uh, and then the other DB brought it down for a pick. And that's like, all right, well, that sucks, but it's going to happen. Um, had some bad overthrows again, which is still an issue, but he did hit some deep shots today, which I was, I've been waiting for. And I said, I was like, man, I just want Caleb to show something. He showed something today. He had some pretty nice throws. He had a great couple throws to Rome. Rome had a great day. Cole Komet had an amazing day. Some insane, like, strikes. Great anticipation. Throwing the ball super quick. Stuff I haven't seen out of a Bears quarterback my entire life, basically. But it's confounded with other mistakes. So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a good day for him. I know people are being really tough on him, which they're always going to be tough on him. They're, people are like, oh, Fields is 3-0. and uh, Shut up, honestly. Like, If I were to list the issues with what's holding this offense back, I don't even know if quarterback play would be in the top five. I would have blocking. I would have receivers not getting open. I would have personnel choices. I would have play calling and I'd have the running backs. Like that that's those are my biggest like what why are these still happening? Like then I'd probably have quarterback play. But if these get better, quarterback play is going to get better too. Um not saying Caleb shouldn't be playing better. And people are out there excusing all of this just being like, "Oh, he's a rookie." blah blah blah. No, this is a Colts defense that really sucks. He should be playing well. He should. This is the kind of game you'd expect him to play well. And he, he did. He had a good day. He had a better day. Um, but he still is making some mistakes. And I'm like, all right, well, the only thing giving me some solace is that every week he's getting better. 
This was his best game. Last week was his best game. Week before was his best game. Obviously, it was his first game. But every week, he's getting better. Um, now, I do want to talk about the whole line because Jesus, this Colts D line sucks. And then they lost to Forrest Buckner. So it really super sucks. Like, worse than the league. And they were still <laughs> giving up pressure. Still. From like Quiddy Pay and like and Quiddy Pay got hurt and like from from this D line that has not shown any anything and now they're they're getting blown out. I I think they benched Nate Davis for Matt Pryor who was awful as well. Everybody on the O line is just like, what is going on? Tevin Jenkins, I'm like, dude, what what happened to you? You used to be good, and I haven't watched the tape. I'm curious to see exactly what the issue is because, geez, like, I don't understand why nobody on this O-line is playing at an exceptional level. Um, like, and, and this is the easiest it's going to get. Like, we're, this is the, this is probably the worst D-line we're going to play all year. And we still couldn't, I don't know how many sacks Caleb took. It felt like at least four, but just bad day from the o-line still like they still it's my number one concern is the o-line but it and it doesn't even feel like it's a personnel issue because if you look individually at the five guys there like you got braxton jones who has been an nfl quality left tackle for a few seasons now not exceptional not pro bowl level but a starting level solid piece who would be a starter on most teams not necessarily like the best or even top 20 but good i'd say or at least dependable you got tevin jenkins who's been playing at a pro bowl level for a few seasons now like probably our best lineman going into this year i thought he would make the pro bowl this year <laughs> that's not happening then you got coleman shelton who was the starting center for the rams when they won the super bowl you got Nate Davis, who was good in Tennessee. Bless you. <laughs> who was good in Tennessee. And then, bless you. <laughs> and then you got Darnell Wright, who was a top 10 pick last year. On paper, even if you discount Nate Davis, because we've known he sucks for since all of last year. But the other guys don't, it like, it doesn't sound like a bad group and they go out there and it's like, whoa, they have no reason to be this bad. I don't understand what happened. And then you can found that with Shane Waldron's really, really messy play calling. Goodness gracious. The worst one was fourth and one on the Colts one yard line. They run a QB keeper. Caleb Williams runs a little bit to his left. Nobody's open. So then he, or nobody, nobody's, there's no, there's no gap for him to run to. They were trying to run it basically. Nobody's there. So he pitches it to Swift who takes a 10 yard TFL because DeAndre Swift, goodness, what are we doing with him, man? Like Swift has been awful. The first three, I think he, they said he had 1.2 yards a carry. And normally I'd be like, okay, well, the, the you know, I, this is why I said week one. I said, well, maybe the Bears' own line isn't blocking for him, which could be the case. But Roshan Johnson looked like a revelation today. He looked worlds better with the same O-line. He was, I mean, it's not even like, it's not like he was, you know, running like, it's not like he was ripping off like 15 yard runs, but he was, he had a good day. He was getting like five yards of carry. Like he played so much better. I'm like, okay, so Swift, you, you, st <laughs> now, now I understand what the problem is. Um, finally though, they took Gerald Everett out and started using Cole Komet. Today was probably Cole Komet's best day as a bear. He had a great day. I don't know how many receptions he had, but he had a touchdown, was getting open a lot, reliable hands, bringing down some some good catches, and great day from a guy that we just gave a five-year deal to. And that's the kind of day I was expecting. And Cole Komet was the kind of guy I was saying was like, 
hey, Caleb Williams is going to rely on this guy. This is going to be a good piece for him. And we weren't using him the first couple of weeks. All of a sudden, oh, look, there he is. This is becoming a pattern of the Matt Eberflus-led Bears. He's been here long enough that I know that this is his fault. What, what do we have last year? Deontay Foreman didn't show up until week three, four, five. I think it was week five. And all of a sudden, he was our best running back when he showed up. It's like, why weren't we using him? It's the same thing with Cole. It's the same thing with Roshan. It's, it's a coaching issue. I know it is. And it, because we can see it in front of our eyes. Like, Iberflus is long past the benefit of the doubt part of his tenure here. He has to, he is responsible for the issues we have here, including the baffling use of timeouts. The worst and most defensive use was the Bears score a touchdown. They are now down by five before the after point they send the point after unit out and then go wait a minute we should go for two so we're only down by three what 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 you didn't realize that until right then i would have like what if i'm a bears head coach and i'm going into that drive i'm like okay if we get if we get a touchdown we have to go for two because then we'll be like you don't think of that stuff ahead of time and then you use a timeout we have to waste a timeout because we I and mean, we were already trailing like it was late in the game we would need that timeout and we did need that timeout yeah and then then they put the two-point unit out and of course it didn't convert but that's a whole other issue it's like why what are you what just just constant like dumb stuff like that is it's just unacceptable and it keeps happening every week it's something like this uh, there was another one that bothered me i can't remember it right now but i know that there was another one and and like Eberflus, great dc really turned this defense into a solid unit but he is not fit to be a head coach in the nfl and this is this is becoming more and more evident as time goes on and of course, we decided not to replace him. We brought in Shane Waldron instead, who also has not been good. And I'm looking at this situation. I'm like, man, you know, do you know how many OCs around the league and great play callers around the league would look at the pieces we have and be salivating because they, they would be looking and they're going, man, you know, if I had Caleb Williams and DJ Moore and Cole Komet and Romo Dunze and Keenan Allen... On my offense, man, I would cook up some good stuff. Like, that is, a, that is a solid unit. And, of course, they decided to keep Eberflus instead of doing that. And here we are. Another year where we know that our Bears head coach is holding us back. <sighs> so, yeah. This is... uh. This sucks. Um, defense, I I still like, you know, they're still playing well. Uh, got gashed by the run towards the end. Um, one more thing I want to mention about Iberflus. Why did we not go for the onside kick at the end there? Either way, the Colts need just one first down to win. It doesn't matter if it's at the 10-yard line or if it's at the 50. Either way, if they get a first down... That's curtains. It's over. So why would you not go for the onside kick and at least give yourself a chance? Like, what what difference does it make? I don't understand. Like, like am I missing something here? You're going to kick the ball deep instead of giving it to them at the 50 if you don't get the onside kick. But then either way, if they get a first down, that's it. Like, I guess they could try a 65-yard field goal. Like... I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't, I just, I don't get it. Like, these are baffling choices. And, and they, they keep happening every week. It was happening last week. It was happening last season, season before that. Just getting out coached by these other teams in easy ways. It doesn't, it doesn't, we're, we're playing reactionary and not proactionary. And, or reactive instead of proactive. 
and it's it's tiring it's really tiring um and now we're going for the third time in a row probably gonna have to be firing our head coach during after our rookie season for our quarterback our first round quarterback again and um yeah i'm i'm just so sick of it man it's and you know what? And maybe we don't fire Iberfus. Maybe they feel stuck with him. I would feel stuck with him. I wouldn't want to fire him. Which is why I was like, if you have any doubts in Iberfus, which I do, I had many doubts. I was like, you, this is a hard reset for the Bears here. They have the opportunity to have a solid roster, but still bring in a great quarterback talent. And we're seeing the results of that. We're seeing the results of their choice to, to keep with the old coaching staff. Bring in an OC that isn't good. And we're stuck with with this, with our rookie quarterback who is showing signs of greatness, but is struggling and is being held back by the baffling choices of the coaching staff and the team around him. And... Don't get me wrong, Caleb, he needs to be better in certain other areas, but boy, are they not making it easy for him. That was the whole point of this, was to make it easy for him to acclimate himself into the league. And yet again, here we are, talking about how he's being pressured and how he's being forced to make dumb decisions, and this is what happens. And, of course, our fan base people are being way too critical of him, but... I knew that was going to happen, you know? Like, everything's always like, oh, Fields, you know, he's he would have had that, he would have had that. No, this is the exact kind of game Justin Fields would have struggled with. But, um, yeah, no, you're going to get people saying Caleb's a bust. You're going to get people saying that we should have kept Justin and taken Marvin Harrison as if that would have fixed or made any difference in how awful this team has been. Um, I Still, drafting Caleb was the right move, and... He's getting better and better every week. Just had the best passing yardage by quarterback in eight years. Like, is that is that not enough for people? They expect perfection. Um, and and I can't I can't expect it out of a guy who's making his third NFL start. And still, third NFL start, and he's doing that. I don't know. It's not like he's being a world beater out there, but like like he's doing good stuff. Like just just let him develop. Like that's his whole thing was he wasn't playing in a college ready system or a pro ready system, I mean. You know, he he had some stuff he was going to have to learn. He seems like the kind of quarterback that it's it's not a start straight out of the gate with eliteness. It's develop into eliteness as most quarterbacks are. Like you're not and, and I think the Bears fan base did this to themselves. They spent the whole offseason going, he's going to pass for 4,000 yards off the gate. He's going to be so good because this team is so good and he's going to be great. He's still a rookie. And, of course, the team around him is struggling. But people are still wondering why. People are still blaming him and saying that it was the wrong choice. And it's like, it's just because you guys put yourself in that spot that anything less than eliteness, you're being let down. Me personally, I mean, I'm I'm a little let down, but it's not over. Like, I'm not nearly as close to hitting the panic button as so many other people are who are like, I'm off the Caleb train. Like, you guys said he'd be better than Fields, whatever. He will be in the future. By the end of this year, he probably will be. It's just right now he's still getting his feet wet. And uh, if we get to this point in December and we're still having games like this, then I'll be like, uh, but... 363 passing yards. I like it. I'm sorry. I like it. Um, there are signs of good... that There are still good things to like about this team. It's just, Jesus, man. This is not a playoff team. It's not. And that's that's what sucks. Because uh, I, I fully went in... I, I said this is going to be a playoff team. This Bears team is going to make the playoffs. And I uh, can't say that they will. Now, we are going into a stretch of games. I guess we're entering, we've already entered into the stretch of games that is ridiculously easy. We're facing teams like the Rams, who have been decimated by injuries. We're facing the Panthers, 
the Cardinals, the the Patriots, the Jaguars. A good team, a playoff team, probably wins all those games. I mean, this team, this this game included. Like, you need to win this game if you want to be legit, and we didn't. So now, um, you know, I, I went in expecting that, hey, maybe we could hit, like, a pretty gnarly win winning streak here if the right, if the cards fall our way. No, I think we win maybe half the games between now and uh, whenever that, I think the Cardinals game or whatever the last game is of this of the stretch before we start to go into divisional matchups. So, yeah, man, uh, this sucks. This really sucks. Um, huh, uh, I will be at the game next week, so hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll put on a good show for me. I really like how Caleb has been getting more and more comfortable, but. Again, this is a bad Colts defense, and we still lost. So, lots to work on. Lots to work on. Um, we'll see what happens, I guess. But, goodness, this season's not going at all how I thought it would, um, especially offensively. Like, you look at a team with this kind of personnel, and you're like, man, like, they should at least be a solid unit. I thought they'd be NFL average at least. No, no, like... No run game, struggling passing game. I know he's a rookie, but still, like, having some having some tough moments. No offensive line, <laughs> no offensive line help at all. And, uh, yeah, bad, bad play calling. So, classic Bears, that's all I'll say.